repeatedly in recent French history, an effort has been made to take away from the French working class gains and benefits that they have won over the years through strikes, through elections, in countless ways. One of these gains won is a national pension system. In France, when you reach the age of 62, you can go on retreat, uh, the French language, retraite. You can retire in English at age 62. Successive conservative business-oriented governments have tried in France to take away that benefit. Here's how they've proposed to do it. Those who work this way never honestly say what they are doing. They come up with clever wording in the hopes that they can fool elements of the working class not to see the deprivation being imposed on them. So, of course, they call what they're doing pension reform. What the reform boils down to, details aside, is simple. To raise the age of retirement from 62 to 64. That's the issue. They've tried it before and they have repeatedly been defeated, mostly by workers going out on strike and saying, if you push this, the country will come to a stop. You are not going to take away, whatever government you are, whatever president is sitting there, you are not going to take away from the vast majority of the French people a benefit to the quality of their lives that they fought hard for. It's not going to happen. And if you push it, we'll push right back. And so the effort to do that failed more than once in recent history. However, the conditions of modern French capitalism are such that the business community, the conservatives, the wealthy, keep pushing whoever is in power to try to get this done. And the reasoning for that is simple. They don't want to pay the taxes that are part of how this gets funded. And so to save themselves having to pay taxes, this is a small minority of the French, they want to deprive the majority of the French of the pension They've won the right to retire at age 62. So you're going to people who are already exhausted at the end of the, a life of working like that, and you're going to take away two of the few years they have in retirement? No, you're not. Here's the second argument. France has prided itself in recent decades on raising worker productivity. What a nice phrase. You know what it means? It means you get more out of a worker per hour than you used to. You've raised labor productivity. Now, you've done that in a number of ways. You have added machinery. You have improved the machinery. You now have AI. You have robotics. You have computers, all kinds of things. But you've also made workers work harder, work faster, etc. And that is wear and tear on the bodies and minds of people. You have made them work harder, but you haven't kept up in terms of what it means for the mental and physical capabilities. Therefore, you owe the working class some sort of adjustment to what you have pressured them to do. But you're not giving them more retirement as an offset. You're not giving them earlier retirement as an offset, which would make sense if you cared about the mass of your people. You want to take away two years of the retirement that they can look forward to enjoying. Don't call it a reform. You're depriving your working class of two years of retirement. That's what you're asking for. 
take away two years of whatever you can enjoy in the way of a retired life. But I stress these are arguments. In France, the unions long ago learned a lesson not all that well learned in many other countries, that the arguments are never what win the case. They're important. They're worth developing. They're worth publicizing. And the French are doing all of that. But you've got to get the bodies out on the street. And that's why the unions declared all seven or eight of the different federations of unions in France agreed together, cooperating to have a general strike. A general strike. They've been planning it for weeks, scheduled for the 7th of March. That strike is underway already because different unions start at different points. And so it's sort of a stretched out event because you're talking about millions of people. It will be not at all surprising if there's more than a million on any given day not working, staying at home, and or in the streets. But the unions in France know that to win this fight, they need to be allied. They have to have allies. And the allies are two things in France that are worth our looking at and understanding. First, they ally with social movements, movements against racism, movements Uh, against the persecution of immigrants, movements, you fill in the blank. The unions work with them. They go out and support them in exchange for them supporting the unions. And since everyone has an interest, everyone in the working class, the vast majority of France, has an interest in holding on to the pensions they fought for and won, This is an alliance that can be built. A bit more interesting in the French context is the fact there's a third player in this alliance. The unions, the social movements, and the left-wing political parties. That's right. The unified left-wing political parties who contested in the race and whose candidate, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, came a couple of percentage points behind Mr. Macron. That's all. Not a big difference. They have also mobilized to support and participate in this general strike. It's a little bit like the next phase of what was called the Yellow Vest Movement a couple of years ago a movement of enormous power and strength, which overturned initiatives by Mr. Macron and only came to an end because of COVID and all that it implied for people getting together and marching down the street. So all of these forces are getting together. And unlike Annalena Baerbock in Germany, the Greens in France are participating in all of this. Unlike Annalena Baerbach in Germany, these people know that capitalism is a big part of their problem. They don't all agree. It's not that. But those who are explicitly anti-capitalist are a recognized, welcomed part of the larger community that's focused on saying, you don't take away our pensions. And it's not lost on anyone that having that anti-capitalist component is a powerful support for the chances they have to win this fight with Mr. Macron. They could not do it without the anti-capitalist political parties, without the anti-capitalist militants that are part of all of this. This is a challenge to capitalism. You want to take away working class rights, an effort of capitalists everywhere, all the time. It's part of what maximizing profit is all about. It's a clever phrase. We maximize profit. Sounds like you're not hurting anyone. 
but it is always partly at the expense of workers. Whether that means replacing workers with machines, whether that means exporting jobs to places where you can get away with paying workers less, you get the picture. The French are fighting back. They are challenging capitalism. Not the least lesson of the French challenge to capitalism embodied in this struggle over pensions is the importance of unifying the labor movement, unions, left-wing political parties, including those explicitly anti-capitalist, and the social movements, many of which have their anti-capitalist components. More and more, it's becoming clear to people that capitalism is part of the problem and that overcoming and moving beyond capitalism is part of the solution. That is a strengthening glue to bring all these things together. And the French are absolutely pioneers. In the past, as far back as the French Revolution, in the recent past, in the Yellow Vests, and now in this struggle over pensions.